Welcome, everybody. We are here for a great final week of the winter webinar series. Can you believe it? We've gone through, I don't know, five, six sessions. We got a couple more left. Anyways, this week, we've got two remaining, our final two, starting with database today and client events. And we'll talk about why that's important in a second. And on Thursday, we're finishing with prospecting and today's methods of prospecting. So today we're jumping into winning with your database and client events in 2023. And the reason why this is such an important topic is because over the last several years, not just in the market, but in the industry, the demand for adding value to the database has grown in order to get the same results. And what I mean by that is agents who have been consistently touching on, dripping on, adding value to their database have noticed actually a decline in database production. And that's because they have been using the same methods, the same techniques, the same email blasts, the same, maybe same stale client events that they've been using over the last five years. And several agents that we've worked with that have reached out to us for help have said, yeah, my business has been stale from my database. Can you help me? Well, our first question is usually something to the effect of, let me ask you a question. In 2022, did you send out an email to your database reminding them to set the clocks back? Yeah, okay, it's time for an upgrade. It's time for a facelift because honestly, who needs a reminder to set their clocks back? I mean, are you honestly, you know, when those messages come through from people in the industry, are you like, oh my gosh, I am so grateful I got that message. I completely forgot it was daylight savings time. I'm so thankful for this value a reminder to set the clocks back. No, the clocks set themselves back automatically. You're not getting any value from that. So today is all about the new stuff that you should be doing or the, the, the things that you should be adding to your current database value proposition as, as well as your client events. And I'm excited to jump in because what's really cool, if you're not familiar with Glover U, um, we're on the ground with you. So everything that you're going to hear today is actually from our database plan. The same plan that we'll use to close over 1,200 transactions this year. And oh, by the way, over 500 of them will come from the database. In fact, if we look back over the last five years, our business from the database has consistently increased each year, increased in units and also percentage of our total overall business. That's because this is an area that we've been taking very seriously over the last five years. And I can't wait to dig in. I've got the one and only Taylor Kerrigan with me today who works hand in hand with our staff in helping them to create ways to add more value and implement the data place, the database plan of action. So first things first, I want to know, because even though we've been doing this for years and years, Glover U has been around since 2017. In fact, I've been working behind the scenes on stuff for Glover U probably since 2007 and 2008. For those of you that are not familiar, my name is Jeff Glover. I'm from right here in Detroit, Michigan. We'll get to Taylor in just a second. Glover U is a broker agnostic training and coaching organization for agents, brokers, team leaders, lead agents, buyers agents, listing agents, ISAs, marketing teams, admin support all over the U.S. and Canada and, of course, other parts of the world as well. We know we've got some people that chime in from other areas and download our podcasts and so forth. So thanks again for being here. I'm so excited to dig into today's comment. First things first, I want to see where's everyone watching from today. I want to see, I see in the chat there, Huntsville, Alabama. Welcome, welcome. Key Realty in Livonia. Awesome. Great company. Miami, Vancouver. Awesome. Kansas City in the house. Going to need some luck this weekend. I don't know, Kansas City. Those Eagles look pretty good. I promise you, I'm not an Eagles fan, by the way, but they look pretty good. Lexington, Kentucky in the house. Jose Medina's team. Love you guys down in Ohio. Salt Lake City. Thanks for joining us on the West Coast. Fresno, uh, Texas. Love it, love it. Awesome. The Philippines in the house. Awesome. All the way from the Philippines. DTP, Plymouth, Michigan. We love you, neighbors. New Braunfels. All right. Okay. Thanks for being on with us, guys. Uh, it's exciting to see all of you. Now, I do want to see our first timers. It's always amazing to me because we've got, I think, just around 2,000 people registered for this session. Who are our first timers? Where are my first timers at? Go ahead and throw that in the chat. First timer or rookie or, yep, me, whatever, our first timers. Awesome. Well, thank you for spending some time with us this morning. I promise that you will walk away from this with as, 
as much value, if not more, than the price you paid. That was a joke. You didn't pay anything. So hopefully it's a lot more than the price you paid. All right. So a couple of quick things um, before we dig into today's content, winning with your database and client events. I want to make sure I share with you a couple free resources for my first timers. So my second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever timers, do me a favor, hang with me for five, six minutes while I get through these. This is especially for my first timers. The first thing I want you to write down, first of all, everyone should have a workbook. All right. If you don't, it's in the chat. Go ahead, download it now. Get your hands on this workbook because there are resources in here, for instance, that I'm not even going to talk about today. So you need to make sure you get your hands on this workbook so you can get all of our resources. But there's a couple that are most popular right now that I absolutely want to make sure you take advantage of. The first thing I want you to write down is gloveru.com forward slash plan. Go ahead, write that down. Gloveru.com forward slash plan. I'm going to give you a copy of our exact 2023 business plan. The same one that I'm using in my business, the same one that our team is using. Just to give you an idea, if you didn't already know, last year as a team, we closed, closed 982 transactions with 40 agents, all right? That's a pretty good per person production. I was responsible for 75, 76 of those transactions. And I personally sell between 75 and 100 homes a year, every year for the last decade. So when we talk about, Everything we're going to share with you today, it's not stuff that we read in a Facebook group. It's not stuff that we heard somewhere else or something that our client shared with us. We're sharing with you what we're doing right now, and I hope you can appreciate that. So I'm giving you our business plan, a PDF copy of it, also giving you the 90-minute instructional video to go with it. Now, this isn't our planner, all right? So not to be confused with our planner. In fact, I think there's an ad for the planner in, in your workbook. Yeah. The, the weekly business planner, that's separate. I'm giving you my actual 2023 plan and the video to go along with it. The code, when it takes you to the Glover U shop, it's going to say that it's 50 bucks or 40 bucks or something like that. The code is all one word, winter webinar. All one word, winter webinar. That's gloveru.com forward slash plan. The code is winter webinar to get your hands on a copy of my 2023 business plan. That also includes a 90 minute instructional video to go with it. That's giveaway number one. Giveaway number two is our Live Unreal magazine, formerly known as the Glover Gazette. All right, this publication is 80, 90 pages of real estate sales and business information. It's all marketing. It's uh, notes from our events, our keynote speakers, stuff that they share. We transcribe everything, not, well, we transcribe everything, but not everything makes it into the magazine. Of course, that wouldn't be fair to all of our attendees who pay to come to our events. We put, we pack as much as we can into this 80, 90 page publication, and we send it out to you for free. So it's super simple to get your hands on it. I will share with you how to do it. I take care of the printing. I take care of the postage. Go ahead and open up your phones to your Facebook app. Go ahead and open up your phone to your Facebook app. I'm gonna show you how you get your hands on the Live Unreal magazine. Again, it's real estate, business plans, marketing, tactics, techniques, notes from our keynote speakers. Go ahead and open up your Facebook app. And in the top right-hand corner, there's a little magnifying glass. That's the search function. You're gonna search Glover space, the letter U, space inner circle. Should start to pop up as you type it. Glover space, the letter U, space inner circle. That's a free Facebook group, which obviously there's value in just being in there. But when it asks you if you'd like to subscribe to our quarterly publication, that's called, that's the Live Unreal magazine that I'm referring to. Put your address in there where you want us to mail it to. Don't put your home or don't put your email address in there because it's physical. It's a, it's a paper magazine that we mail out. So where would you like us to send it? Your home, your office, put it in there. We'll get it to you. All right. That's called the Live Unreal magazine. I hope you enjoy it. Your copy is on me. That's resource number two. Now, there might be some of you that are in the inner circle because you go to join and you're like, wait, I'm already in here. If you're in the inner circle, but you don't receive the magazine, here's another way you can get it. Super simple. Just go to gloveru.com forward slash mag. Gloveru.com forward slash mag. That's how you sign up for the magazine. If you're already in the inner circle, there you go, gloveyou.com forward slash M-A-G, short for magazine. Last and certainly not least, our hottest resource right now. There we go, got your magazine this week, love it. Our hottest resource right now is the daily text message. Every day, Monday through Friday, I'm sending out a message specifically relating to succeeding in real estate, 
Sometimes it's right, right now I'm sharing a lot of mindset thoughts. Sometimes it's, I went on an appointment last night. Here's what the seller said. Here's how I handled it. Or sometimes it's, Hey, we just created this marketing piece and it got us a lot of responses. And here's how, why it got responses or, Hey, we just adjusted this. When we do videos, I recommend you do this. Anyways, Monday through Friday, I send out tactical information through a daily text message. By the way, if we have any of our daily text subscribers, could you just throw down in the chat? Would you get, are you getting values of those? Okay, good. Yes. Awesome. I will continue to provide those so long as you guys continue to open and read them. So thank you. All right. So here's the deal. Here's how you get it for free. It's a Monday through Friday daily text. There's no spam or anything. This is content. I write it every single morning after my 7.30 a.m. accountability call. Here's how you sign up. Take out your cell phones and open up your text messages. Thank you. I, great, I, I, I look to see you guys. Great to see all the messages. Thanks, Karen. Feel free to share it with as many people as you'd like, by the way. Um, daily message. Here's how you get signed up for it if you're not on it. You're going to text the word morning to 55444. So take out your cell phones. For those of you that are not on it, open up your text messages. The phone number is 55444. It's only five digits, I know, but it works. And in the body of your message, just type, thanks, Derek. Good to see you on, brother. Uh, Derek Bowers on from uh, Oak Point Country Club. Good golfer, much better golfer than me. Hi, Derek. And he's a good real estate agent too. Um, in the body of the message, just type morning and hit send and you're signed up just like that. All right, it's, give it like 30, 60 seconds and you'll be signed up for that. That is probably our hottest resource right now. I think we've got close to 20,000 agents on that around North America. And if you're in Canada, uh, you want to email info at gloveru.com and we will manually register you. Thank you for that. Yes. The, the little five digit code thing does not work in Canada, but the daily tax message does work in Canada. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to email info at gloveru.com and in the subject line, just put daily text. So that way we know what you want. And in the body of the email, first name, last name, cell phone number. That's it. Daily text. Send that to info at gloveru.com. The body of the message, first name, last name, and your cell phone number will sign you up too. And anyone who was signed up before, if for whatever reason you stop receiving the messages, because sometimes you might accidentally just hit stop or whatever, um, message us. If you're not getting them anymore, let us know. We'll get you re-signed up. Okay. Shifting gears. Again, everyone's got their workbook printed off. I just gave you three free resources. There's another five or six in here that I didn't even get to because I don't want to spend all of our time going through free resources because we got some good content to share. So get this printed off because this has got all the resources that you're going to need in here um, as well as some other good stuff. All right. So that was dropped in the chat. We'll get that dropped in the chat. Can we get that in there one, one last time for those that might have joined in late? Go ahead and download that. Get that printed off. Okay. Winning with your database and client events in 2023. Um, we have Taylor Kerrigan with me today, who she's been with the organization now for this year. We'll be going on your 10th year. Yeah, a decade. Years, decade with the company. And she has held every single position you can imagine in the real estate business, uh, including but not limited to also real estate agent. Um, but starting off as an executive assistant and then going into a marketing role and then going into a listing role and then going into a transaction coordinator role uh, and then going back into an executive assistant role and then managing operations team members and then event planning uh, for Glover U and also the Live Unreal organizations. Pretty much, you know, now the director of operations of Live Unreal companies. If there's a real a position in real estate, she's held it. And so photographer for a while. Yep. So you missed that. Photographer. Okay. Yep. We had our photographer quit. And so she had to go out and take the photos and and drop off paperwork and pick up paperwork. Basically, anytime there's a job, Josh just kind of looks at me and says, I think you can do it. Yep. So now fortunately that's made me very well rounded as an operations or as a leader in general. And so to, you know, Jeff and I were sitting down a couple of weeks ago and he said, you know, what do you believe is most important as a message to get across to those at Glover U in regards to their business in 2023? And the first thing that came to mind was the exact stuff that we're doing at the Glover Agency, which is our real estate team, which is putting a, a higher emphasis and focus on our database and what we're doing for clients and how we're pouring into them. And so I told him without a doubt, I wanted that you know, my webinar to be focused on what are you doing for your database in 2023? And is it the highest and best things that you can do? Because yeah. I think we both see very often that, you know, agents are still doing the, the methods or the client events that worked 
a year ago, three years ago. There's a reason why our database plan updates every single year. There's a reason why the database plan I'm going to walk you through today is the same exact one that we just debuted to our team at the beginning of this year. Because you have to keep changing, because what our, our, um, our clients want and what society wants and the things that are important to us today are different than they were three years ago, yeah. right? And so we have to keep updating that. And I think that's why, you know, today's topic is so important. Yeah, I know that for myself personally, I was actually never a database guy. I mean, some of you guys know the story. Uh, I, I started off as a prospecting guy, aggressive prospector. And then I became like an advertising and marketing guy, billboards and radio and TV. And I always ignored the database yeah. uh, until I went broke <laughs> advertising like crazy. And so I recognized there's got to be something to this whole database thing that people have been talking about. And it's crazy to think because it's now been six years since we shifted from, and don't get me wrong, we still do prospecting and we'll still do advertise. Uh, but our number one source of business today is database. We went from it was like number five or six. Yeah. And it was only five or six because of the natural growth of the size. I mean, we weren't doing anything but like holiday cards. Right. Um, today, it's number one. Yeah. And that's because each year we started with implementing a plan year one, and it became like 13% of our business. In year two, we had a new plan and it became 21% of our business. Now today, it's over half of our business comes from the database. And we're going to share with you some things that we're adding and changing to continue to make that even better. Yeah. And I mean, you're completely right. Your first step is make sure that you have a database, right? And make sure that you're keeping track of, you know, who your A clients are, who your B clients are, who your C clients are. And we'll talk about how you figure that out today. But I'll never forget, you know, when I first started working with you, I think it was like year number one, you told me you wanted to send out a mailer to your clients. And so I created the mailer and got it ready and like printed it. And then I asked you, who do I send them to? And you looked at me and you're like, what do you mean? <laughs> and it's because for years, which obviously, you know, you're super successful and you were super successful back then. It was on to the next, on to the next, mm -hmm. on to the next. Mm -hmm. And database wasn't really a big focus for us. But what we realized is that these are already people to a certain degree who already know, like, and trust you. How often are you pouring back into them and reminding them that you're still in the business? You're still here to help them, right? And making sure that they're a repeat client. Yeah. And so that's when we really shifted the focus to, no, we have to do more than just send them the Christmas yeah. mailer, you yeah. know, once a year. I remember the first mailing that went out was like maybe 1400 people it went out to. And I had been listening and selling real estate for, you know, I don't know, 10 years this time. And I remember thinking, doing the math of how many deals our team had done, because we were doing, you know, 600, 700, 800 transactions a year. And I remember doing the math thinking, well, wait a minute, we've been doing five or 600 deals a year for the last five years. There's 2,500 right there. Why are we only sending out 1,400 mailings? That doesn't even make sense to me. We didn't keep track of anything. We, we had no, no one. I mean, the, the files were shredded and that was it right back then when you had files. So today it's the opposite. Database is number one. And let's dig into it. All right, so what we're going to start with today is basically I came up with eight must-dos when you're hosting at a client event. So I know the topic of today's webinar is not only winning with your database, but also client events. So we're going to start with client events, and then we're going to finish with database, and you'll see how the two tie together. So first, I want you to write down, like I said, we're going to go through the eight must-dos when hosting a client event, and feel free to chime in every so often on anything you have. So number one, I want you to write down when to host your event. Number one, when to host your event. So if you look at the database or client event plan at the Glover Agency, which we have a great operations team that helps put all of these together, we really host two main events a year, and then we encourage our agents to host two smaller events a year. And we talk more about that later in today's webinar. But the two main events that we host a year are hosted in April and are hosted in fall. And the reason why I point that out is because both of those seasons are right before either A, when they're about to see a lot of people, aka fall is leading into the holidays, or with the April event that we host, our opening day event, that event is right before spring starts yeah. and the summer selling season. Yeah. So I want you to make sure that when you're thinking about, okay, I'm going to host a client event, don't just pick a random month because you're not as busy or it's it sounds like a good time of the year for you. Make sure you're pairing your event right before a big um, selling season or a big opportunity where they're going to be in front of a lot of people. Yeah. And if you were only going to choose one of the two, meaning, because if you were like me, I mean, I would sit in rooms mm -hmm. and people would talk about their client events 
And I would say things in my head, I'd be like, are you kidding me? Really? You do all that? No way. I'm not going to do all that. I'll just put up another billboard or I'll make another phone call. I was wrong. Client events are, are legit. If you do them right, they can be very profitable. If you're going to do just one, my recommendation would be that you do one anywhere from 45, no more than 90 days, 45, no more than 90 days. I like the 45 to 60 day slot. Then your biggest, before your biggest listing month of the year. I want to be fresh in consumers' minds when they're just starting to get the garage cleaned out, when they're just starting to get the backyard cleaned up, when they're just starting, if, if they've got a home with a basement, they're just starting to get the basement cleared out. Yeah. I want to be fresh in their mind at that point, not while they're listing their homes for sale. I would not encourage you to do a client event in, in your biggest listing month of the year because they've already made up their mind. They've already got their home listed for sale. You want to you wanna get them in front of you 45 to 60 days prior to your biggest listing month. And I'm not talking about your personal biggest listing month. I'm talking about your market's biggest. Yeah. So if in Detroit, the biggest listing in the month of the year is May, well, then we're going to do it in the beginning of April or the end of March, which is actually when we do it. 45 to 60 days prior to your biggest listing month of the year and watch you get more listings from your client event. Yeah. So to recap, because I saw someone ask in the chat, we host one of our events. It's our opening day event. So we're in Detroit. Um, the, the baseball season is technically considered like the start of spring for us. And if you're from Detroit, those of you that are joining us from Michigan, you know that opening day in, in Detroit Tigers baseball, that is like a, a statewide event that everyone takes the day off for and parties and so forth. So um, we host that event in April. And again, that's right before our selling season, mm -hmm. like you said. And then the second one that we host is in the fall and we do a cider mill event where we actually have um, like four or five mini events in different areas. So we service the entire state of Michigan. So we'll do one in Oakland County. We'll do one in Wayne County. We'll do one in Livingston County so that way we're servicing each of those clients. So obviously if you run a bigger team, that's something that you may want to consider your location and what makes the most sense. But we'll talk more about that today. Um, but number one was wh when do you host your event and are you strategic with the month that you host it? Okay. Number two, write down, invite the entire database. Number two, invite the entire database. Now, first, what I want to clarify is what are we considering the database? So at Glover U, we really identify that there's five different types of databases. And so I want you to write this down first, because this is going to make sense for the rest of today's webinar when we talk about database, which ones we're talking about. I was just going to say, while you're chatting today, I, I forgot to do this in the beginning. Mm -hmm. While you're chatting, make sure you change your chat setting to everyone. It automatically defaults to hosts and panelists. If you want everyone to see what you're putting out there, make sure when you send a message in the chat today, because because we both keep an eye on it. Well, she's talking, I'll keep an eye on it so we can answer some of your questions. But just make sure you're addressing it to everyone, not just hosts and panelists today. Okay. okay. So five types of databases. So database number one is your past client and sphere. Database number one, past client and sphere. Database number two is what we call your exchange database, exchange database. And if you've never heard that term before, Jeff Clare, uh, classifies someone as an exchange as someone that you would have in your CRM, right? So maybe it is a Zillow lead that came in that you had a conversation with, but you never actually got to have a buyer consult with them or it was a sign call that came in, right? So your exchange database, we in layman's terms, it's anyone who's in your CRM who hasn't conducted business with you yet, okay? Database number three is your social media database. Database number three is your social media database. And that's easily classified as who are your Facebook friends? Who are your Instagram followers, right? How often are you putting things out to your social media database? AKA, how often are you posting on social media? Database number four is your agent referral database. So one of the benefits of being affiliated with Glover U is we do a lot of agent to agent referrals. Our coaching clients send referrals back and forth to one another. Do you have a database where you keep track of all of the agents that you've sent business to or you've received business from? That's the fourth database. And then the fifth database is one that we've actually added this year. 
it's your business owner database, right? So like in the city of Plymouth, you know, is one of, it's one of our locations for one of our offices. We have a database where it's every single business owner who owns a business in Plymouth. And so anytime we're doing something in Plymouth, whether it's an Easter egg hunt or something in that regard, we're making sure that that business owner database knows about it. So those are the five databases that we refer to at Bloverview. Specifically today, we're really talking about database number one, which is your past client and your sphere database. So someone asked the question when we talk about database and we talk about these client events and inviting everyone to it, who are we referring to? We're talking about our past client and sphere. And in all honesty, the reason for that is, is if you look at our CRM, you know, we have 80,000 people in it. If I invited 80,000 people to one of our client events, one, that would be really costly. And two, we have no idea who would be showing up, right? So just know for everything we discussed today, we're talking about database number one, which is past clients in your sphere of influence, mm -hmm. okay? So number two here, so number one was when are you hosting your event and are you being strategic with when you're hosting it? Number two is invite your entire database. And again, this means database number one, which is your past client and sphere. Now, the reason why I make this number two in the list is because it's so often that I'm working with someone in our systems of real estate course where they'll tell us, you know, all right, this is a opening day event. You know, I know that these people don't really like to go out. You know, they don't even really like baseball. Why would I invite them to the opening day event? The answer is it's a touch. And so when we're thinking about being the real estate agent that's your preferred amongst your database, it's the person who's consistently providing value. And in all honesty, it's an excuse to reach out to them and have a touch, right? Especially leading into the spring season. So even if you know that they're not going to attend, like for instance, one time we hosted a zoo event, you know, we invited even the bachelors in our database. We invited the single people in our database, not just the families, because it was a touch that we did to them. And it was another, just so you know, here, once again, we're providing value to you. And so I want to make sure that anytime you're hosting a client event, regardless if you think they're going to come or not, still invite them. Okay. That's number two. The question in the chat, which I answered, do you invite uh, people in your exchange database to your larger events? Yes. If you're going to do something client focused or a smaller event, you don't have the room for everyone in your exchange database. But for your bigger events, yes, you would absolutely include your exchanges. Like our opening day event. No. Your exchange database is everyone in your CRM, which has oh. 80,000 people in it. Oh, I'm sorry. So we... This, we are, I am teaching the webinar today, not Mr. Lawrence. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, the exchange database is everyone who's in your CRM, okay? So you're not going to invite those people to your client events. Your client events are for your past clients and your sphere. It's for database number one. When we talk about the database plan and later in today's webinar, I want to show you the things that you're going to send to the exchange database. And at the end of the day, the reason why we're doing that, Jeff, is because we haven't transacted business with them yet. Mm -hmm. If we have them come to a client event that we're hosting, we have no idea who they are. Mm -hmm. We have other ways that we invite people that we don't know to client events. And I'm going to share with that next. That's actually number three. So number three on your list is bring a guest. Number three on your list is bring a guest. What do I mean by this? Everyone who's in your past client and sphere database, so database number one, you're going to invite them to your client event. When you invite them, you're going to encourage them to bring a friend or a spouse, significant other, uh, another couple, family, whatever the case is. So for instance, on our April event that we host, the opening day event, we actually send them four tickets to the party. Two tickets are for them, and then two tickets are for them to bring a, a friend, another couple, whatever the case is. And we specifically spell that out in our invite. We tell them, hey, we want you to bring a friend. The more, the merrier. Why do we do this? We do this because naturally, if they're bringing, let's just say Jeff and Taylor are going to the event and they bring, you know, Bob and Aaron, let's say, Bob and Aaron are now more likely to work with us at the Glover Agency because Bob, or Jeff and Taylor already liked them, already liked the Glover Agency. And the Glover Agency invited Bob and Aaron to something that their realtor doesn't invite them to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have something to say on that? I know you you've always been a big fan of having the well, it's just it's just a quick way to get people that that know like you and trust you um into your database because you now have an opportunity to get in front of someone and spend some time with them and make an impression on them. Uh and and they're there with your 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 people. They're there with your your clients, which obviously if your clients are there, they know, like, and trust you. 
it's just a great way to build. It's a, it's a great organic way to build the database with people who can restart referring you right away yeah. versus somebody that's an online lead that takes a ton of time to cultivate and add yeah. value to. This is somebody who right away will refer you because of that experience. In most instances, let's be honest, your average realtor, you know, present company excluded because you're on this webinar and you're you're forcing yourself to learn and grow, your average realtor doesn't host client events. They don't do enough for their database. And so if you are and you're encouraging your database to bring friends and family, now you're more likely to get that business from friends and family. It honestly is the quickest way to double your database if you're looking to grow, you know, your reach and who, who your potential clientele is. Okay, so number three was bring a guest. Number four is get on stage. Number four is get on stage. What do I mean by this? Anytime we host a client event, doesn't matter if it's the opening day event, it doesn't matter if it's an Easter egg hunt, it doesn't matter if it's the cider mill, every event, it is mandatory that we have a space that we can have a stage with a microphone and a speaker. And obviously acoustics have to be well enough that they can hear you, okay? And the reason why we do this is because if you've got everyone there at your client event, you have to make sure that you're getting in front of them consistently. So our rule is that every 30 minutes, I literally will set a timer on my phone during our opening day event. Every 30 minutes, it reminds me to go find Jeff and tell him that he's gotta get back up on stage. Now, why do we do that every 30 minutes? Because obviously people come and go, right? Maybe they didn't hear the first announcement, but they heard the last announcement. But also, too, you're constantly reminding them of different things. You're going to hear number um, seven when we talk about raising money during events. Well, we're going to talk about, you know, the foundation that we're raising money for. We're going to talk about thanking them for being there. Maybe one of the times Jeff goes up on stage, he's going to share with them the market stats and, you know, what's going on in the market and why now is the best time to sell. So every time you go up, you're going to have something that you're sharing with them, informational. But obviously, we're also thanking them for attending and letting them know, you know, that we appreciate them being there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's every 30 minutes. So if you're hosting a client event, which on average, you know, our client events at a minimum, your event should be 90 minutes. Um, our opening day one is obviously that's an all day party. So that's a lot longer, but for the most part, it's pretty much every client event we do minimum standard. We're not doing it unless we can have it for 90 minutes. And you're going to hear in one of these later points, what you do to fill that 90 minute time. And if you if you happen to be at a venue where you know, maybe your group is split up into different rooms and so forth, it may it may be valuable to invest the money in having an AV company provide a couple of TVs that are wired up to to the to the main area, um, speakers that are wired up to the main area. You know where we do our where we do our uh, Detroit Tigers opening day event. It's it, there's different ballrooms and there's different sections to the building. And we make sure that all of the TVs are on. Anytime I'm on camera, the TVs are, are displaying that throughout the building. All of the audio, their speakers in, in the different areas so they can hear me while I'm speaking. Uh, it's, it's important that you know, you're, they're, they're there, you're adding value to them um, and, and they're there because of the value you're adding, but also they need to be reminded of why they're there. And that helps do that every 30 minutes. Yeah, and for those asking, while this is called our opening day event and it's about Detroit Tigers baseball, it's not at the stadium, it's not at the ballpark. It's at a hall that's across the street from the stadium. So that's why, again, you have to think about, you know, where are you hosting your event and does it fit the must do's that you've required when you're hosting a client event? You know, we're very transparent at Glover U. We'll always tell you, hey, and this is part of the benefit of working with a coaching organization that's boots on the ground and with you. Mm -hmm. We hosted a zoo event and not only was it really expensive, but we realized that it didn't check all the boxes that we wanted for a client event because what happens when they're at the zoo? You see them once and then you never see them again because it's so freaking big that, you know, we never get to see them again to bring them back for that 30 minutes every single time. Mm -hmm. That's why we changed it and we don't do a zoo event anymore. Yep. So you have to look at your client events and you have to make sure that it checks these eight things that I'm walking you through. And if not, don't do it, okay? Uh, we have somebody wanting an invite to our opening day event. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number four. I'm sorry, number four was get on stage. Number five is social media exposure. Social media exposure. So one of the things when Jeff's up on stage every 30 minutes, he's reminding them to take pictures during today's event, 
and use the hashtag, you know, either 855 Jeff Sells or household name or uh, JGA opening day event. For every event, we have a hashtag, right? If you've been to one of our, our Live on Real Summits or Live on Real Retreats, you know we tell you the same thing. Always use hashtag Live on Real Summit, Live on Real Retreat. Same thing today. If you're on today's webinar, take a picture of us, post it on social media, show them that you're growing your database and you're pouring into your clients. Hashtag Lover You, tag Lover You. Every 30 minutes, Jeff's going up on stage and reminding them to do that. Why? Because naturally, if they're posting on their social media platform, and let's just say Bob has 5,000 friends, now Bob just promoted Jeff to his network of 5,000 friends, and we just expanded our reach. So every time we host a client event, we are constantly reminding them to use the hashtag and to post as much as possible. Now, the best way of doing that is tying a giveaway to it. Yeah. So, you know, the more that you can say like, hey, every 30 minutes, we're going to give away a pair of Tigers tickets, or every 30 minutes, we're going to give away a gift card or a gift basket, whatever it is, you know, obviously, it should be something that's a value that they want to try to win. But if you're doing that consistently, they're more likely to post. And then now what are they doing? You're growing your reach naturally, just during this one client event. And it's a great way to go back and find all the photos if you want to do a recap post or you want to do a recap video or anything. You just search the hashtag and boom, they're all there right in one place. Yeah, because now, by the way, and I, I know most of you know this, anytime someone uh, validates you as a real estate agent to their friend network, it means so much more than you talking about yourself. So if you can get people posting about you and posting about how great the party is and how they look forward to it every single year and they're so thankful that you're their realtor, you just got deeper down the funnel with their friends list. Okay. Number six, keep them there. Number six, keep them there. What do I mean by this? You heard me say already, anytime we host a client event, minimum standard is it has to be 90 minutes. Okay. Why? Because if we're going to put the time, the money, the effort into hosting a client event, we want to make sure that we're maximizing the amount of time that we can talk to them while we're there, right? We want to make sure, you know, it's Jeff's goal. We know every single time he knows that he should shake the hand of every single person who's there, okay? Now, obviously, if they're only there for five minutes, that's harder to happen. It's harder to build rapport or reinstill that rapport if it's only a five-minute event. So nothing against pie giveaways. You know, this is one of the things I talk about the events that used to work and the events that work today have changed throughout the years. The reason why we're not a super big fan of pie giveaways anymore is because what happens? You know, they walk in, they grab the pie and they leave. So instead, what have we encouraged our agents to do? You can do a pie giveaway still, but make it a party, right? One of our agents, her name's Linda Schwartz. She hosts this every single year where it's like a two hour event at our office. All of her clients come, she's got pizza, she's got drinks. Every time there's a whole bunch of pictures that are taken and it's an opportunity for her to hang out with her clients. Mm -hmm. But that's how you took same effort, right? Still pie giveaway, but we expanded it to 90 minutes. So that way she was able to get into deeper rapport, get into conversation with them. And it's not a quote unquote drive by yeah. like it used to be. Yeah, the, the pie giveaways of course have been a thing of the industry uh, for the last, at least as long as I can remember people talking about client events. And um, I, I almost wouldn't even put it in the client event category because you don't get to do all these other things that, that she's talking about, right? There, there is no you on a microphone giving announcements. Um, it, it's just a quick high buy, you know, um, uh, shake their hands, wish them a happy holiday and see them later. Uh, the, one, the one box that it does check that I do like about the pie giveaway is the proximity, especially if you're doing it before the holidays. Yeah. doing it right before they're getting ready to see a bunch of people. It does check that box, but if you're going to do it, why not make it better? Why not make an event out of it? That way you get to spend more time with people and that way it's more impactful for that expense. Yeah. So our rule of thumb, and this is a great example. So we, for the first year, hosted the Easter egg hunt. Now, for those of you that have been to an Easter egg hunt before, you can drop in the chat, you know, they last like what, 30 seconds, 90 seconds. Like the kids are almost like vultures, how quick right. they go and grab all of the Easter eggs. So, you know, Jeff in his true fashion said to me, Taylor, I know that these Easter egg hunts usually last about 90 seconds. I need you to find a way to make it last two hours. 
the OQ, the I'm sure you'll figure it out model that we talk about. And so what do we do? Well, during the Easter egg hunt, now, obviously, the Easter egg hunt itself did still last 90 seconds. It was done in a blink of an eye. But what are the other things that we did leading up to it? We had an Easter bunny there for them to take pictures. We had craft stations. We had a balloon animal artist. We had a face painter. You know, you do all of these different things. So that way, once again, they were kept in the park for 60 to 90 minutes before the Easter egg hunt. So we got a chance to talk to them. We got a chance to have Jeff go up on stage and say hi multiple times. Yeah. So my number one thing that I want to make sure that you guys get out of today's webinar, in addition to all of the content that we're sharing, the most important though, is you need to make sure you're max maximizing every event to its fullest potential, which is resulted in how long are you keeping them there? Yep. Okay. Number six was keep them there. Number seven, is support a nonprofit. Number seven is support a nonprofit. Now at Glover Agency, we formed our own nonprofit a few years ago called Glover's Heroes that gives back to different types of heroes in our community. You don't necessarily have to go to that degree. There are dozens, hundreds of different nonprofits in every single community that you can choose to support. Uh, you know, For those of you that know me personally, you know that in my spare time, I run an animal rescue. We have all the time, you know, we'll sometimes partner with the animal rescue if we think that that's, that event better pairs with that nonprofit. The reason why we tell you to do that is because at the end of the day, people like doing business with people who do good things. And the more that you can show that you're supporting and uplifting your community, the more likely that you're going to be supported by your database and they're going to enjoy coming to the event. So we'll always do like a 50-50 raffle during our events. We'll always do like a silent auction during our client events. Why? Because A, it's raising money and it's doing good for the community, but B, people like to give back and they like to work with people who give back. And so it gives us a reason to A, promote another nonprofit and give them exposure, but B, give our clients that opportunity to feel like they're giving back. Well, and uh, that nonprofit will share it with their database. Yep. Hey, come join us. We're going to be here with Jeff and his team at blank at this time. Come see us. We've got a booth. Now all of your vendors and sponsors, by the way, which you know are in addition to the charity, can also be sharing about your event. Yeah. So just as a side note, this isn't in the notes, but because you said it, I want to add it in. It, whatever nonprofit you're partnering with, we always suggest you look for like a small to medium sized nonprofit organization, nothing against the American Red Cross, nothing against, you know, some of the bigger charities. It's just unlikely that the American Red Cross is going to blast out your event to their database, where if you partner with, let's just say, you know, I'll use the animal rescue as an example, we have 400, 500 volunteers, we're more likely to blast it out to our volunteers and our followers because we're small to medium. So if you are looking for a nonprofit, again, nothing against the large organizations, support them. It just may not achieve what you're looking for if you're asking them to also share the event. Okay. Yep. Good point. So number eight, last point on this. Uh, I want you to write down the word swag. So when we talk about swag, we always do some sort of giveaway at our event, and it's something that they get as a quote unquote gift for attending. Mm -hmm. Now, Sarah Hoffman, one of our Glover U coaches, said this at the summit, and I was like, I never really thought about it that way, but it's so true. Like, if, if you receive a gift from someone and you wouldn't keep it, don't give it mm -hmm. as a gift. You know, how many times we go to different things, you know, and they give out like free pens and, you know, free koozies. That's cool, but what happens? It gets thrown in the drawer. Yeah, well, right. a, pen, a pen is good for a conference because you're actually going to use it right there in that moment. Yeah. Uh, but yes, it needs to be something that they're going to get value from, that they're going to appreciate. You know, think of things that you've gotten that you've appreciated. So example of this is when we host our opening day event, everyone who attends gets the t-shirt that has the Detroit Tigers logo on the front, and it's got our logo on the back. Why is this a smart idea? Because A, now they're walking billboards of ours, right? Because if you go to a Detroit Tigers game, you need a Detroit Tigers shirt to wear. Might as well wear the one that Jeff gave us, mm -hmm. right? So that obviously they have to look cool. So now we have mini walking billboards every time that they're at a Tigers game, suddenly uh, uh, supporting Jeff Glover and Associates, okay? Number two, there are items of value, right? They're nice shirts. You know, if you know and you look at our Glover U swag, Jeff like refuses to use Hanes, refuses to use anything that's not a nice, nicer name brand. Why? Because we actually want you to use it. We yeah. actually want you to wear it. 
So yeah, is it a little bit more of an expense? Yes, but I would rather spend an extra dollar or two on something that someone's actually going to use versus something that's going to get tossed in the trash and it doesn't have that same impact. The question is on our uh, logo. You probably should have put the disclaimer out there. We are the official real estate team of the Detroit Tigers, so we have paid for the naming rights and the logo usage. So no, I would not recommend you put another team's uh, logo on your shirt. So you have to be mindful about that. Um, but you could do something with your team's colors. Yeah, uh, you can make you can, your own logo. Well, no, right? you and you can you can even use the team's name as long as you're not using the 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 actual logo of it. Yep. All right. So there you have it. To start, there are the eight must dos anytime you're hosting a client event. Now, to Jeff's point, you know you can host other client events and and so forth if they're smaller costs. But if you really want to truthfully maximize exactly, you know, every time you're hosting a client event, these are the eight things that he'll sit down and he'll ask me, okay, we're heading into our opening day event. Taylor, did you do number one? Did you do number two? Did you do number three? And it's my responsibility to make sure each of these boxes are checked. Okay. So before we shift gears, in that systems of real estate course that we teach, we actually give you the exact playbook anytime we're planning a client event. I see all of the questions in the chat of how do you make sure that you get the, the um, couple's information of the clients that or the couples that they bring? How do you make sure and do the check-in process? You know, how do you make sure every single person gets the swag gift upon check-in? We teach you all of that in the systems of real estate course. We actually give you the event playbook page by page of how I plan our client events at Glover Agency and Glover U, along with a spreadsheet that keeps track of everything. So if you're interested in that course, you just text operations or operations. Yep. Text operations to 55444 if you want to learn more about the systems of real estate that she's talking about. Okay. All right. So shifting gears <clears throat> there I have let's see one two three four five six I have six things that I want to just mention last about an event before we shift over to the first quarter database plan and I am conscious of time so number one I want you to write down day before the event always send a no before you go day before the event send a no before you go if you don't know what a no before you go is it's an email that just reminds them of the event and it tells them the location, it tells them the time, it tells them the expected weather, it tells them, you know, if you're doing any food or beverage, it gives them all of the information. This is one of the best things that you first needed to do years ago because it reminds everyone that they signed up for it. And if they can no longer make it, it lets it tell, you know, it's the reminder to them to let you know that they can't be there. So that these are just six quick things that I was thinking about this morning of stuff that people tend to miss when they're doing a client event. And I wanted to share them with you. So number one is always send a no before you go. Number two, always oversell your event. Always oversell your event. Now this is hard. I'm an analytical. And when Jeff first told me that our venue could hold 500 people, but he wanted me to sell it to 800 people. Literally, I was twitching. I pushed back every way I could. I told him, absolutely not. And he said, just trust me. And from that point forward, I've always trusted you on it because Jeff's right. Anytime you host a free event, there is always a no-show rate. And so you always want to oversell. What would you say the actual percentage is? Um, so you could have up to a 40% no-show rate, but also you don't want to plan on a 40% no-show rate because if you over-invite by 40% and you only have a 20% no-show rate, you're going to have a problem. So a good rule of thumb would be a 20 to 25% no-show rate. So uh, if we know that the facility can only hold, say, um, 100 people, we're probably going to invite 125, 130 people. Mm -hmm. So always oversell. I know, again, for the analyticals, that, that makes us twitch a little bit, but he's right. There's always a no-show rate and you don't want to have half amount of the people in the room, okay? Number C, or the next number, uh, we use Eventbrite to manage our registrations. That was a question in the chat. We also, number D, always do a save the date on Facebook. So we'll always do an event that we post on Facebook. And the reason for that is because when someone clicks going to your event, it shows it to the other friends on their list that you're attending the event. And so that helps with exposure. And apparently I wrote the same thing twice because I wrote Facebook event and Facebook event. So sorry, there's five things. And then number five is uh, fear of missing out. 
So uh, you already kind of no, touched no, no. on this. Hold on. I think I know what you were doing here. Saving the date and then creating a Facebook event. I'm Those not the same thing. Things. Oh, I gotcha, don't, okay. yeah, I don't know. Because you can do a save the date image. You can do, you know what you're doing and when you're doing it. You can promote save the date before you have an app, the registration and all of that complete. Yeah, that's true. Right. And then you can create a Facebook event, which then that's where people are clicking that they're going and so forth. You can invite all your friends through there. Okay. Yeah. So to recap, the first one is uh, know before you go before the event. Next one is always oversell. Next one after that is use Eventbrite to manage your registrations. Next one after that is make sure you're pro promoting a save the date. Even if you don't have everything outlined yet, still get the date out there, right? So that way they can get it on their calendar. Next one after that is always create a Facebook event for it. So that way it gets shared to their friends as well. And then last but not least under events, we always do some sort of fear of missing out follow-up. So Jeff already mentioned one of the benefits of having a hashtag or having them tag you at their event is you can go through and easily grab all of their pictures. So after the event, what we'll, we'll always send out to our database is thank you to the you know 500 clients who joined us at the annual Detroit Tigers opening day event. We were able to raise $20,000 for X nonprofit, whatever nonprofit it is. Here's some pictures from the events. We can't wait to see you next year. Okay, so now we're showing all of the pictures and everyone having a bunch of fun. Why? It's another touch to the database, which is important. But two, maybe it makes them less likely in the future to attend. I know that everyone's been in the position before where you think about going to something and you're like, eh, is it going to be good? Is it going to be boring? Is it worth my time? It's social proof that no, your events are awesome and you should come to the next one. And so we have it happen all the time where people will reach out to us and say, I will never miss another opening day event because of how much fun we have. Mm -hmm. That's what you're accomplishing by doing that. Okay, okay. so we got the event stuff out of the way. Yeah. Let's talk about winning with your database. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick share screen. So this is something that we put together at the beginning of the year for Glover Agency. I'm gonna share with you guys the month of February here. So this is something that you should put together if you are looking to do more with your database this year. So you'll see here, there's a little checklist that has the call, the event, the mailing, another email, whatever the case is, whatever touches that you're doing. If you're not familiar with our database plan at GloverU, we always suggest that you have a certain amount of calls, you have a certain amount of emails, you have a certain amount of events, you have a certain amount of mailers, and you have a certain amount of um, emails that are going out to your clients every single month or every single year, I should say. So this breaks that down. So we cover this more in depth in the Systems of Real Estate course. You actually get all of the months. I'm just showing you the month of February for today's webinar. But what we do is we actually say, all right, if you're going to call your clients, here's what you're calling them and saying. Now, one of the lowest cost, actually no cost, um, client events that we'll do is we'll go and we'll find like three or four restaurants that are considered hot right now and we'll make a reservation. You know, we'll make a reservation for 6.30 on Valentine's Day, 7 p.m. on Valentine's Day, 7.30 on Valentine's Day. And then we'll call our clients usually probably next week. You know, I know Valentine's Day is Tuesday, so we'll probably start calling on maybe Sunday and saying, hey, Jeff, did you remember to make a Valentine's Day reservation? If not, don't worry, I've got you covered. And then we give them that reservation. That's not, that costs nothing to do, right? It's just the cost of your time. Now that's considered something that's a value and it's another touch that you're able to reach out to them and show them that you're thinking of them and you're going above and beyond. Honestly, everyone on today's Zoom, you could do this right now and you could touch your database, okay? So there's the call and there's the event. You know, another option is a pop by. Um, for the, those of you that have seen the Domino's heart-shaped pizzas, you know, buy a couple of those, drop them off to some of your best clients with a bottle of wine, okay? It's another touch to them that doesn't cost you very much. Here's our VIP box. This is something that we do every single month for our clients. We're actually in the process of building them right now. You should see what our office looks like. There's pizza. You walked in the other day and you were like, what is all this stuff? And I'm like, it's the Valentine's Day box. Mm -hmm. So we put these together for our clients every single month. Now, in the Systems of Real Estate course, we do talk about how you determine what clients you should send them to, what clients you shouldn't, you know, what the cost is, how we assemble these. So all of the questions that you would have, you know, we address in that course, but we, we'll put these together and we'll say, okay, these are our top 10 clients, send them the VIP box. And in this instance, this one is called, you have a pizza, my heart, thank you for your continued referrals. 
Okay. Uh, Steve Spinelli is a little offended that we used um, ragu. <laughs> he, he prefers probably what prego pre, pre, pre is that the other one prego or something? What's yeah. the one that's like the meaty one? Anyway, you know budget cuts. So we had to go with ragu. Sorry. Right. Okay. Anything right. but ragu. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then the, the last thing here is the postcard, okay? So we'll send a postcard or a mailer to our client, whether it's once a month, once a quarter, obviously you need to put together your database plan and figure that out, but we will always do infotaining. So nothing against, you know, the happy Valentine's Day, we love you emails, that's cool. But instead, we went and found four restaurants that were considered hot this time of year, and we put those on the postcard instead, and we mailed those out to whether it's a farm or your database, whatever the case is, that's what we're blasting out. We've learned over the years that people want to be entertained in what you're sending them. The happy Valentine's Day emails, they get deleted right away. You know, So you'll see right here, we took that same thing that was a mailer, and we made it an email. Again, we already put the effort in. Now we're just duplicating it and sending in an email blast instead of a mailer. So when we talked about the different types of databases, and Jeff, to your point about the Exchange database, this is something that I would send the Exchange database. Why? Because there's no cost associated, okay? Nothing against inviting them to client events, but if I haven't done business with them yet, I might not want them at my client event. I don't know if they're my type of clientele. I don't know if they'll ever do business with me, right? So I'm going to send them something like this because they're more likely to open it and they're more likely to follow the continued stuff that I'm sending out. That's something that I would send to the Exchange database to answer that person's question. So here's the homework assignment that I would give to you. Yes, this is a little overwhelming, by the way. There's one of these, you know, this section is just the month of February. This is the mailer. This is the call. This is the event. This is the email. We do this every single month for our team. And what we tell them is if you're just doing one thing for your database right now per month, you know, maybe you're just calling or maybe you're just emailing, step it up to two. If you're doing two things for your database right now, step it up to three. Okay. And that's because if we're focusing on doubling down and if database is truthfully something that you want to squeeze more out of this year from your database, this is how, right? It's just adding one more thing. So a lot of our agents, for instance, are doing the Valentine's Day reservation stuff, but they are also sending out the email, okay? Or maybe they're doing the email and they're sending out 10 of the VIP boxes, right? You have to decide what works best for you and your business. The one bit of advice that I will give you is don't do all of them. Your clients are going to think, what happened to this guy? He never used to talk to me and now he's blowing me up every single month. So you need to baby step in and match your business where you're at. I know you're answering things in the chat. Yeah, go ahead. No, I, that was it. That's that's the database. Oh, plan. got it. So basically, what you're saying is, uh, we have we have to have a plan every single month of something we're going to do to add value to that group. And or do you recommend because a lot of people might be on a on a smaller budget? Uh, yeah. Of course, we've even lowered our budgets. You know, with the new market, um, would you recommend maybe some of the stuff you just do to a select group? Yeah. And so, maybe the, 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 anything that's maybe higher cost, you know, that's something you do to a larger group. Like how do you, how do you determine what you do based on the cost? Yeah. So when you're coaching with me, my requirement is that you break up your database. So remember, we already broke up the database in five. I already shared with you what those five databases are. But if we're looking at the past client and sphere database, specifically database number one, I'm actually taking that database and breaking it into three, a, a category, a B category, and a C category. And so I'll tell you, you know, hey, Lauren, tell me who your A clients are. And your A clients may be the ones who are constantly always referring you. They're your biggest cheerleaders. You know, if someone posts on Facebook that they're looking for a realtor, you can always count on that person to comment your name. That's someone who's considered an A client. A B client may be that person that you hear from maybe once a year, right? They send a referral here or there. And then your C client would be the ones that you really never hear from. Well, if I'm looking at my database plan and I'm putting together, okay, yeah, I want to do these VIP boxes. Maybe you're only sending them to your A clients, right? And maybe you're only sending them, you know, two or three a year. You don't have to do it every single month. What I want to make sure is really clear because it's sometimes overwhelming looking at that database plan. No one is doing all five or all six of those things every single month. That is not cost effective and it is overwhelming for the person who's receiving it and for the person who's doing it. But what we are saying is maybe one month you do a VIP box. The next month you do an email. The month after that you do a postcard. The month after that you do a call. 
Now we just at Glover U give you all of those suggestions so that way you don't have to think about, oh, it's February, what should I do? We tell you, hey, this is what's proven and this is what works. Mm -hmm. And that's why we put it together in that form. I just showed you February's because it's the month that we're in right now. And my suggestion would be pick one of them and execute on that one as soon as possible for yourself in the month of February if you're not doing anything with them. But that's kind of how we break it up. So that way it's one, not overwhelming on the agent who's executing on that stuff, but two, not overwhelming on your database because they're getting 10 different things from you yeah. in one month. So if you guys could do me a favor, turn to page 18 in your workbook. And if you joined us late, I'm gonna have Taylor drop the workbook one last time in the chat. Uh, there's a handful of free resources in there, which I didn't get a chance to share with everyone through the through the webinar here. So make sure you download that, pull that up as a PDF or print that off. On page 18 in your workbook is actually an opportunity to work with Taylor directly for 16 full weeks. Now, um, there was a day where Taylor had a, a long list of people you know, lining up to coach with their one-on-one. -on -one. And because she's busy behind the scenes, handling a lot of stuff for the organizations, she does not have the ability to do the one-on-one -on -one coaching like she used to. So instead, we created a program called Systems of Real Estate for both real estate agents and operations and marketing team members to learn everything we do behind the scenes. I mean, everything from like the basics of you know, listing and buyer checklists and, and how to turn your customer experience into a lead generation tool, all the way to the more advanced stuff of how to hire a marketing assistant and what their job title should be and their job description and what your first executive assistant should be responsible for and what you should pay them and all of that good stuff. So on page 18 in your workbook, it's got the entire layout of the program there. And it's also up on the screen. Taylor just pulled it up. So Taylor, obviously you've been teaching systems in real, of real estate for a bit now. Tell us uh, what they should know about it. It honestly, you know, first and foremost, no, it's not a class just for operations people. I teach basically the class is always like 50, 50. There's 50% of people who are operations team members who work on teams or work with a, an agent as an executive assistant. And then the other 50% are agents. Mm -hmm. And my question to you would be, if, if you can't answer these four or five things, you need the course. What's your database plan? What do you send out to your clients every single month? What is your review follow-up plan? So that way you get continued referrals and you get review or you get referrals from your reviews. You know, what is your touch points to your sellers and your buyers? You know, do you know every single time, you know, pictures are taken, do you know what your follow-up message is to them after that? Do you know what happens every single time, you know, that you have a showing? Do you have a system every single time? So it happens like this with every buyer or seller. Do you host client events and do you check these eight boxes? And do you know, you know, what your, your marketing material, your social media presence, all of those things look like? If that's not like a question that you can answer like this, then Systems of Real Estate is the course for you. It's 16 weeks of literally everything. You know, there's really nothing. And for those of you that have taken the class before in the past, you know, you know that I'm an open book. You ask a question, I say, oh, this is what we do. You know, somebody asked me a question today. How often do you share financials? And I answered the question right away. What, how we do, have the conversation with financial statements with our leadership team, what that meeting looks like. Here's the three questions that we ask. Here's how we dissect the p &L. Anything you have or any questions you have in regards to running a real estate business is typically answered in our systems of real estate course. It is truthfully the foundation of running a real estate team running, you know, if you're a solo agent running your real estate business, it's the plan for you from start to finish. And it's 16 weeks of a lot of content. And it's live, all yeah. live. So it's it's 45 minutes of content plus 10 minutes of Q&A. So uh, it's not like you're just sitting there watching Taylor present. You're actually having a chance to throw things in the chat where she'll stop and read, or at the end, you'll go through all the questions and you have an opportunity to raise your hand and unmute yourself and ask a question live. Uh, also, we keep the group small, you know, all of our group coaching programs, depending on the topic, you know, they range anywhere from say 25 attendees up to no more than 100. Why? Because we want everyone to get an opportunity to ask questions and get the most out of those. So systems of real estate from the one that essentially uh, has been with me from the start as it relates to how our business has grown uh, is not just checklists and, nope. and operation stuff. 
I mean, it's our lead generation systems. It's our, we share okay, with you our drip campaign. Once a listing appointment, don't... once a listing appointment is set, then what happens? What is all, done automatically from there? So yeah. um, you'll, you'll gain a lot from spending any time with Taylor, but of course, 16 weeks live with her. And by the way, it's only three ninety nine a month for four months. So, yeah. you know, that's like 1600 bucks. I would hope that you would share one tip that would help them save that in a year, let alone the business that they'll do from, from learning from it. So if you want more information, text operations to 55444. I threw that in the chat. So you have that. Did you have something else to add? Well, I can tell you if you got value out of today's webinar, imagine 16 weeks of this with every aspect of the business. Mm -hmm. You know, just like today's webinar was, okay, here's the eight things you need to do. Here's the six ways you follow up with them. Here's the five different types of databases. No, at Glover U, regardless of what course you take, we are very content heavy and we will make sure that you get your money 10 times back. And that Systems of Real Estate course truthfully is for anyone who's selling real estate right now. If you don't have a system for everything that you do, you need the course. Yeah. And learn from, I mean, here's the deal. You got 20 years of our trial and error of, nope, that didn't work. Nope, that wasn't profitable. Nope. Yeah. Put into one. So you, you can speed up the learning curve. We, we failed for, forward for you. If you're if you were sent this link because you know uh, your broker or team leader said hey you should be on this you know and you're on the operations team, print this off, take this right back to your your team leader or your your whoever is responsible for running the business. Say hey I think we need to do this or I think you need to have me join this. I promise it will absolutely be money well spent. And, and for everyone asking, all of our group classes begin next Monday and Tuesday. So if you've been attending these webinars and you've been trying to decide which course you want to take next for your career, know that they start on Monday and Tuesday. So if you've been weighing your options of what you want to attend, make sure that you pick one as soon as possible because there is a workbook for every single course. And we want to make sure that you have the workbook before the class begins. So if you haven't done that yet, put that on your radar to do this week. All of the programs are at GloverU.com. We've got one more webinar left this Thursday. I'll be live with Justin Ford talking about today's methods of prospecting. And as Taylor said, all the group programs start next week. So go to GloverU.com. Right at the top, you can see coaching programs or hover over um, programs, and you'll see them all there. So that way you can pick the one that's going to be best for you. And heck, you might be you know, ready to sign up for systems of real estate, and you might have your top listing agent that you want to have them go through listing mastery, whatever it is, they're all labeled there. You guys can see them. If we don't see you this Thursday in our final webinar, and we don't see you in one of our webinars on the, at the back of your workbook, you have the live unreal retreat 2023. Make sure you're saving the date for that. It's June 19th through the 22nd. We've got some amazing keynotes. We've got some awesome content lined up for you. That's in your workbook there. Early bird price, by the way, is only 399 bucks. So take advantage of that. We've got Ed Milet. We booked him several months ago and it, or announced that several months ago. And we've got some other great keynotes to go along with that. So we don't see you Thursday. We don't see you in systems of real estate. We'll see you in Traverse City this summer. Thanks for joining us today. Let's go kick some butt and have a great rest of the week. See you guys. Bye, guys.